Hey everyone, it's Rob Litton here from drumsaword.com and welcome to this free video drum lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to take you through 10, 10 drum beats that I consider to be absolute classics, iconic, influential drum beats. I wouldn't say that this is a definitive list, this is a top 10 for example, and there are no particular orders I take you through them, but I want to show you these drum beats and then show you how to play them, and I consider them to be very influential. So I believe a lot of drummers have heard these drum beats and then been inspired and um, uh, used them in their own playing. They're also very, very uh, um, iconic because you can recognize the song just from the drum beat. You hear the drum beat, you go, oh, that's so-and-so, that's so-and-so. So, uh, like I said, I don't think it's like the, the top 10 and this is the only 10. There's plenty more out there that are, are, are defin definitive drum beats that everyone recognizes, but these are my 10. And the reason I chose these 10 in particular is because you can learn each of these songs in full through my website, drumsaword.com, where I teach you a, a song, the drums, from start to finish, every single note, you get the fully transcribed um, sheet music. But I'll tell you more about that at the end of the video. And if you could do me the favor of liking and subscribing and commenting on this video, then uh, I'd really appreciate that. And also don't forget to download the free PDF sheet music that comes with this lesson. I've got three pages for you of all 10 drum beats, and you can find a link beneath this video so you can have that printed out in front of you as I go through this lesson. Okay, let's crack on with our first drum beat, again, in no particular order. So this first drum beat is from the song Walk This Way by Aerosmith featuring Joey Kramer on drums, and it's an instant classic. As soon as you hear this opening bar of drum beat, you know exactly what song you're getting. Uh, so very slowly, we'll play eight notes on the hi-hat. I'm gonna leave out the open hi-hat at the beginning for now, because you can add that on in a second. The bass drum and snare drum and hi-hat are playing this, very slowly. One, two, a three, and four, and one, and two, and a three, and four. And you can hear that extra bass drum note being played in between the hi-hats on the uh of two. Two, and a three. Two, and a three, and four. And then at the beginning, we've got an open hi-hat opening on the beat one. So opening with the downbeat, which is an interesting place to open it. And it closes on the and of beat one. One and two and a three and four. And one and two and a three and four. And one and two and a three and four. And two, a three and four. which of course run DMC later covered. Uh, so now let's hear it properly up to speed without a microphone on so you can hear just the drums. So this next drum beat is from Sunshine of Your Love by Cream drummed by Ginger Baker. It's a particularly simple drum beat, really, but what's special about it is the fact that the snare drum bat beat is falling on beats one and three of the bar and not two and four. Usually the bat beat falls on beats two and four, but Ginger decided to put it on beats one and three. And it's one of the earliest examples of a rock song where that's been done. It's very distinctive. Where we've got this very, very solid on beats one and three, giving it extra power. So very simple, we're playing on the floor tom with our right hands, one and two and three and four and, and the snare drum's on beats one and three, one and two and three and four and, one and two and three and four and, and the bass drum falls on two and and four and, one and two and three and, so it's a, a complete reverse of the drum beat, really. After a while it starts to sound like a normal drum beat, but that's if you've, if you've lost where the downbeat is, one, two and three and four and, one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two. So really unique sounding really when you get it in context with the music. But here's what it sounds like without the microphone on. So I'm a massive Dave Grohl fan, so this is probably a little bit biased of me to include some Foo Fighters and some Nirvana stuff later on in this lesson, but I also happen to think these drum beats are really iconic, really classic sounding drum beats that you immediately recognize. And this one in particular is a belter. I don't know a drummer who doesn't appreciate hearing this and would probably want to air drum along to it, non-drummers included as well. Uh, it's a song, was a drum beat from the song My Hero by the Foo Fighters, actually drummed by Dave Grohl and not Taylor Hawkins as most people think. It's actually Dave Grohl on the album. So it's a real bass drum workout, this. There's a lot of bass drum stuff going on. 
Um, but actually when Taylor plays it live, he changed it slightly. So at the end of this section, I'll show you how Taylor plays it, how you can give your bass drum foot a little bit of a rest in between some of the sections. But what we got here is a two bar phrase that gets repeated three times and then the fourth time it's repeated again, but the end is slightly different. That's, you get like a little drum fill bit at the end or a section that's different. But what we got here at the beginning, four bass drums in a row, one and two, and I like to do a double crash, which is more powerful. One and two and three and, two flams there, three and four and. Then into the second bar, we go to the floor tom and high tom. I'm gonna use this as my floor tom, this is my high tom. And I've read it flat on, on the notation, but actually you wanna flam them slightly to make it a bit more meaty. Instead of playing, you wanna play it, flam them slightly. We get one and two and three and four and, that second bar. So put the two bars together, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. And you can hear that when we loop it round, we get six bass drum notes in a row, the four round at the end of the second bar and the one and two and at the beginning of the first bar. So actually there's six bass drum notes in a row there. One and, one and two and three and four and 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 one and two and. So when you speed up the actual tempo of the song, you're gonna see that's quite a bass drum workout. The last two bars, like I said, slightly different. It starts the same though. One and two and three and four and one and two and. But then from beat three, we get three and four. A flam bass and an open snare drum and hi-hat. That rings out for the whole of beat four. It then closes on beat one when we go back to loop the eight bars. So those last two bars um, of the eight bar phrase. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And then it goes back to the beginning. So uh, before we show you, show you play it up to speed, let's just take a look at what Taylor does. So you've got, you've got an option really, if you wanna uh, give your bass drum foot a chance. What he does here is he just plays the bass drum uh, on beat one and leaves out the bass drum on the and of beat one for the two bar loop in the first bar. He just leaves that bass drum out so we get one, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So it gives him a little break. In fact, sometimes he also includes the open hi-hat on the and of one, so it fills in that space with an open hi-hat. One and, uh, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. This is like a little alternative for you. You don't really have to play all six spatial notes in a row. You could leave it out the and of one if you wanted to. But here's how the actual drum beat sounds like played up to speed. So this next drum beat is a good example of something that's very uh, identifiable. Whenever I hear this drum beat, I immediately think of the song it's from, which is American Idiots by Green Day, drummed by Trey Cool. Uh, it's a really cool drum beat, this, especially when it's played up to speed. We'll play, it's like a, it's like a tom tom groove. Our right hand is playing on the floor tom. It's a two bar pattern. And again, the bass is sort of filling in the gaps, just like we had in the previous example. Um, I've written it as, as the medium tom. The left hand's gonna play on the medium tom, but you could play it on the high tom. It doesn't really matter what tom you use. But make sure you're riding on, on a low tom and then your left hand is able to play a higher pitch tom. But what we get for the first bar is this. One and two and three and, let me just double check my notation, four. So we're playing the snare drum on beat four. One and two and three and four. There's a back beat there on um, the beat of four. It's not a double back beat, it's just a single back beat on, on the uh, beat of four. So four, and then we go to the floor tom to play and a one. So right, left, and a one into the second bar, which is one and two and three and four. Snare and crash together. Put the two bars together. One and two and three and four. And a one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. And a one and two. And let's now hear it played up to speed. So 
So this is definitely one of my favourites from the list. Um, it's the drum beat from When the Levee Breaks by Led Zeppelin, drummed by, uh, of course by the legendary John Bonham. Um, and I talk about this more in the full song list you can get from my website, but there was an echo effect added, well not added, it, the, the drums were recorded in an echoey hallway. So you get this echo effect on the bass drum, which um, makes you think you're hearing more bass drum notes, but you're not. But I talk about that more in the actual full lesson. But this is actually what he, he actually plays, um, and I'll show you that instead. So. Well, we've got eighth notes on the hi-hat, um, and uh, the bass drum is going to be playing on the uh of two and the and and the uh of three. Snare drum back beat on beats two and four. Quite simple. One and two and a uh, three and a uh, four. And one and two and a uh, three and a uh, four. And one and two and a uh, three and a uh, four. One, two, a uh, three and a uh, four. Feel free to add some little ghost notes there if you want to sort of fill it out a little bit. So here's what that sounds like played up to speed properly. So the drum beat from Enter Sandman by Metallica, drummed by Lars Ulrich, um, sort of improvises quite a bit with the snare and, and crash cymbals. Um, uh, he doesn't really repeat these four bars all the way through the song, all the way through the tom section, he sort of improvises a little bit, but this is sort of the, the most distinctive one that happens first, and he sort of adds, like I say, more snares and crashes towards the end of the four bars. But this is, this is the first time we sort of hear it uh, in, its, in its most simplistic form. So he's playing quarter notes on the bass drum, floor tom with his right hand, one and two and three and four and. And for the first um, three bars, it's the same. He's, he's playing the back beats on the toms, the higher toms. So this could be my high tom, this could be my medium tom. We get the back beat falling on beat two on the medium tom. One and two and. And then for beat four, he plays four and. His left hand goes between the high tom and the medium tom. You can play whatever toms you like. You've got multiple toms. Feel free to mix it up a little bit. But what we hear on the recording is one and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four. The very last bar has that snare and crash stab that I was talking about earlier on, where he sort of adds more later on. Uh, so the bar starts the same, one and two and, but then we, go, we wait right to the end of the bar, which makes it cool, it's like an upbeat stab, on the and of beat four, one and two and three and four and. Sort of out of nowhere, it surprises you, one and two and three and four and, because that snare drum as well, with the crash, very loud and powerful, suddenly comes out of nowhere. So we get the four bars together, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, and, three and, four and. it loops around really nicely so um, here's what that sounds like played without the old mic on This next drum beat is so much fun to play. Sounds amazingly cool as well, but it's not particularly complicated. There's a little bit of muscle memory involved, but once you've got the muscle memory kicked in, you've learned the movement and you can play it up to speed, it sounds really, really cool. It's a drum beat from Stockholm Syndrome by Muse, drums by Dominic Howard. It's a one bar pattern. He plays this, this section um, uh, two, two or three times in the song. We're sort of um, rolling on, on the toms really. So I take each beat as, as it comes, we get, one E and uh, so bass drum on one and the uh there. One E and uh. The reason we get the bass drum on its own on the uh of um, one there, one E and uh, is to give our hands time to come down to play a snare drum flam on two. One E and uh, two. And then for the next part of the bar, he plays and uh, three E, and uh, three E and uh. The bass drum fills in the gap at the end again giving our hands time to come down to a flam snare drum on beat four. And a three E and a four. And then to loop it back round it again, he plays and a uh, at the end, and a, uh, and then we go back to one E and. It comes down the toms for that last bit. 
So slowly the whole bar, one E and a two, and a three E and a four, and a one E and a two, and a three E and a four, and a one E and a two, and a three E and a four, and a one E and a two, and a three E and a four. And I make mistakes like that when I'm trying to think too much. But let's hear it played up to speed properly. So this next drum beat is probably one of the most air drummed of all time, in my opinion. It's the drum beat from the song Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana, drummed by a certain drummer that appears again in this list, strangely, Dave Grohl. Hmm, what a quinky dink. So we're playing quarter notes on the open hi-hat, and the bass drum and snare drum are sort of playing around it really in a fun way. So the first half of the bar we get this, one E and a, two E and a. Those extra bass drum notes and snare drum notes are falling just before or just at the end of each of the beats on the uh of one and the uh of two. One and a uh, two and a. Uh. It makes sense when you speed it up. There's a big gap there between the right hand, but when you speed it up, the right hand sort of flows nicely. Then we get for beat three, three E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, and then four and. So three E and a, uh, four and. Put the whole bar together. One, a uh, two, a uh, three E and a uh, four. And one, a two, a three, E and a four. And one, a two, a three, E and a four. And one, a two, a three, E and a four. And one, a two. I can't help but play a double crash. This feels good. Oh, add extra bass on there. What I'm doing accidentally there is playing an extra bass drum on the and of beat two, leading into that um, first offbeat snare drum which of course is don't hear on the recording, but I think it sounds just as cool. Anyway, that was supposed to be included, but there's some bonus ideas for you. So let's now hear it played up to speed. So this next drum beat is laughably simple, played by uh, a drummer that perhaps wasn't the most famous for his skill. Um, he's eventually replaced. The song is Live Forever by Oasis, drummed by the original drummer, Tony McCarroll. But it is a classic. As soon as you hear it, it's an opening um, drum beat that, that starts the song. You know exactly what song you're getting. It's so wonderfully simple. He's playing up on the ride cymbal, nice and light on the ride cymbal. Um, and his left hand's gonna be playing on the floor tom. One and two and a uh, for the first part of the bar. One and two and a. Uh. Then the second half of the bar, three and four and a. Uh. Put it together, one and two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and four and a one, two, a three and four. And let's hear it up to speed. So like previous examples, this uh, drum beat also starts the song and as soon as you hear it, you know exactly what song you're getting. It's Sunday Bloody Sunday by U2, drummed by Larry Mullen Jr. It's a two bar drum beat and we're basically playing 16th notes, hand to hand, double handed 16th notes on the hi-hat, but coming down to the snare drum to play certain notes. And the bass drum is, is keeping very simple underneath it on those quarter notes. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one, two, three, four. So for the first bar, the snare drum, it starts on beat one. It makes sense when we loop it around for the second bar, you'll see what I mean in a minute. We just get two notes at the beginning, one E and uh, back up to the hi-hat for the and and the uh, and then come back down to the snare drum. Uh, the only sort of downbeat, I guess, for the two bars is on beat two. One E and uh, two E and uh. One E and uh, two E and uh. Then we just play up to the and of beat four where we come down again for two more notes. 3 E and uh, 4 E and uh, so off beat snare drum beats there on the and and the uh, in between the bass drums, that's what I mean by off beat. 
Then for the second bar, we get two more snare drums coming on the off beats, on the and and the uh of two. One E and a, two E and a. And then for the very last part of the bar, it's like the same, three E and a, four E and a. But when we loop it round, we get and a one E. So we actually get four snare drum notes in a row when we loop it round. So slowly the two bars sound like this. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four. And a one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four. And a one E and a, two E and a, three E, oops, four. And a one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four. And a one E and a, two, that's better, three, four. And a one E and a, two, and three, four. And a one E, two, three. And now let's hear it properly with our extra snare drum notes being added there. Up to speed, here we go. So there you go, hope you found that fun and enjoyable. Don't forget to download the free PDF notation that came with this lesson, you'll find the link beneath this video. Three pages, which include all the drum beats, so you can have it printed out in front of you as you go through this lesson, or as you go through your practice session on your own in your drum room. And if you could do me the favor of liking and subscribing and commenting and all that good social media stuff, then I'd really appreciate it, especially if you found this video useful and enjoyable and you think other people might enjoy it, then help spread the word by you know, doing all the, all the good stuff, that'd be really appreciated. So thank you in advance for that. And then you might also want to consider, consider signing up to become a, an online member at my website, drumstheword.com. This is what I'm doing this video for, promoting my website. And the 10 drum beats or the 10 songs I included in this uh, video lesson, you get to learn them in full from start to finish. Every single note, you get the full video song lesson plus the full PDF drum chart notation that, came, that comes with each of these songs. And I've got over 300, including the 10 you've seen in this video, famous and popular songs up on the website already and counting. Uh, and when you sign up for the $97, you get instant online access to all those lessons. Plus, as a thank you for signing up, I give you access to hundreds more little mini videos teaching you many, many more famous beats, fills, and even some great drum solos as well. I also give you three eBooks I've written over the years containing hundreds more famous beats, fills, and solos. And then over the year of your subscription, you also gain instant online access to all the new material I upload for my members. And I record every week unless I'm ill or on holiday. So you've got lots and lots of cool stuff to look forward to over the, uh, the year of your subscription. But if you've got any questions about that, feel free to email me, robertdrumstheword.com. Um, and then also you might want to type into the comments below if you're watching this on YouTube, what you think your favorite uh, are, or what you, are your favorite iconic drum beats. Not necessarily the best drum beats in the world, but the ones you think are just so unique and, and signature that perhaps I was a bit silly to have missed them off this lesson and perhaps I'll include them in a future drum lesson. So feel free to join in below if you've got any ideas yourself. But again, robertdrumstheword.com if you want to email me if you've got any questions. Until our next drum lesson together, toodle pip and happy drumming to you.